Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. My name is Alex. Today is Thursday, September 22nd, 2022. And we're going to start this episode off with a little... Um, a little r slash career advice we'll make this a 30 minute consultation it'll be free it'll be free but i i do want to let you know in advance that if you have any particular question if you're in need of some career advice actual career professional advice that goes towards building yourself as a professional don't hesitate reach out you can find us on Instagram, the Corporate Cowboys. On Patreon, the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. Additionally, you can send snail mail. That's P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California, 95741. Now, today's post essentially uh, is, is a question, and it's very open ended. It's very open-ended, so I'm going to take my time with it. Not too much time, because I would like to review some of the comments of what other contributors, what other Redditors have posted, what their take is on this question in particular. I, I find it's very interesting and, uh, and uh, not so much a hot take, but thought-provoking, if you will. Now it's asking... Folks, folks who refuse to learn new things and then get confused when they get little to no raises. Why do you think this happens? <laughs> so it's essentially they're asking, why do folks settle? Why do folks become complacent? Why don't folks keep moving? Why do they just sit still? And for some context, there's a body here. As someone a few years into the world, world force, I'm assuming workforce, as someone a few years into the workforce, it appears that those with the most career progression and biggest compensation increases are highly adaptive, open to learning, and constantly trying to better themselves or their organizations. On the flip side, I've seen jaded, fixed mindset workers plateau and even be demoted. It seems like this latter group, it says later here, but it seems like this latter group does not have the awareness of what they're doing or really not doing either. Can someone please further explain this? <clears throat> Basically, psychologically, Socio-psychologically, it's called learned helplessness. You might want to Google that a little bit, read through one or two research journals on the topic. But learned helplessness, and it is a bitch to break out of. It is a bitch and a half to break someone else out of. Why? Because like anyone with a problem, they must first acknowledge a problem exists in order to then move to address it, in order to then wish to address it, to want to address it. It's difficult. It's difficult because not many folks want to admit that a problem exists until it's fucking critical and maybe too late. So... Why, why do I think that is? Why do I think it is that people who refuse to learn new things and that get confused about the little to no raises part, why do I think that happens? It's not so much that they want it to happen. It's my personal belief that most everyone gets a job with the prospect of making money. And continuing to better themselves. I doubt. I, I doubt. And if they exist, they are a marginal few. 
right? They are in the they're a, a marginal population. I doubt people get a job, get a you know, get a position in an organization with the idea that they're going to be there until they die. I doubt folks are interviewing to be lifers, right? Because I mean, at that point, you could just apply. You don't even have to interview. If you, if if a company, if I, if I, you know, when I worked for corporate, if I was doing the hiring and firing, if I learned within the first five, 10 minutes that you were, would be willing to dedicate your life and necessarily put your life down for the corporation, for corporate, you're hired. What, what else do I need to hear? I'm not going to make this a 30 minute interview. That's 10 to 20 minutes. I could have you on the clock already. I'll get you a uniform today. You don't even have to read the employee handbook. (laughs) So, so why do I think that is? It's that individuals, when they get beat over the head with reality, right? And it's a very sobering life lesson. When they get beat over the head with reality, their creativity fizzles out. Their good ideas just seem to evaporate from their brains. With good reason. Why? Because the brain learns to be helpless. The brain learns that any good ideas will go unheeded. The brain learns that anything but conformity will be disciplined. Or anything except conformity will be treated, will be mistreated, will go underappreciated, misappreciated even. So to me, it's not that that it's it's a it's a bug, right? It's actually a feature. Really, it depends what side of it you're looking at it as. But it's a bug for some people, for those people who want to get ahead. And it's a feature for people in corporate. Well, if you don't want to learn more, if you don't take the initiative and self-promote yourself, right? Like a corporate cowboy should. If, if you don't take it upon yourself to develop your professional identity, to become a consummate professional and negotiate your way out of a perceived dead end position, right? Then you won't learn and you won't move. You won't be making any more money than when you first started. Maybe a cost of living adjustment, if that, it might be less depending on what your depending on what the evaluation process awards. It might be less than seven percent less than five percent it might only be three percent two percent or one percent and they'll still tell you to be happy i mean they'll give you the lip service that they appreciate your hard work but that you ought to be the one who is grateful (laughs) it's a joke man it's it's to me at least to me that the idea of not wanting to do more, it's it's a joke. And individuals, people who settle, it doesn't matter to me what fucking position you're in. You could be entry level, you could be the CEO. To me, you are entry level forever. If you settle as the CEO, right? If you're not doing more, you're just showing up for the check then. You're no better than the motherfucker three to 10 rungs below you on the ladder just showing up for the check just a mindless body an empty suit not doing anything not creating value for the company not not developing business to improve the organization to improve your network because it's necessarily your network even if you are under an umbrella organization the people within your immediate sphere of influence are your network. And if you won't learn, if you won't go out of your way to self-educate yourself, you won't promote yourself. 
your network won't grow. And likewise, the organization that you and your network make up, that you and your network are constituents of, right? The, 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 the organization that you're a part of, likewise, will not grow either. This uh, this original poster sounds confused. Like, can someone please ex further explain this? There's there's not really much else to explain. These folks have no hope. These folks don't see an end in sight, even though it is a dead end job. They don't see the end. As a corporate cowboy, a consummate professional, I believe it's also our duty to develop those around us to become leaders to inspire them to motivate them to improve to be better to conduct better business to be better business people and when we don't do that we're providing a disservice we're causing a disservice on our associates on our network our potential partners. And it's not a crazy idea. It's not, you know, far out and left field. It really just requires that people be conscious of what it is they do on the job and how it affects, how it impacts the world they necessarily live in through their customers obviously it starts through their product or their service but it affects their customers one way or another and then those customers go on to affect the community all that goes into play what's hard what's hard what's difficult is the idea of letting go of what you know to learn something different, to learn something new, to grow. It's uncomfortable. So when folks settle, when folks settle, it's because they've, they've become accustomed to a routine that they don't want to change up. Why? Because change is uncomfortable. You get comfortable in a routine. You, you get into a rhythm. You begin to take on habits and develop patterns, develop habitual courses of action, right? It, it just becomes routine to you. It becomes programmatic. And you don't want to change it. Why? Because change, any change, it could be good change. It could make your work more efficient even. It could have you take less time to do something. But the fact that you're already so used to doing it the long way now having to doing having to learn to do it the short way constitutes more work in in the uninspired mind let's call them in these folks who refuse to learn new things because learning new things is uncomfortable it's a learning curve and the learning curve might not even be that steep but any learning curve is a curve it's got some incline to it it's got some requirement of having to expend effort to learn it, to be able to do it, to be able to grow proficient and, and master it. Even, again, even if it makes your work, your, your job ultimately more efficient, ha has you take less time, has you conserve energy, right? Just having to learn that process to some folks is a deal breaker. <laughs> now you try convincing, you try convincing someone with no prospects of improvement that they have to learn something different in order to do their job better. It's like stacking insult on top of insult. It's like telling them they don't know how to do their job, the one that they're already doing now and giving them more work to learn. Yeah, no, it's, it's difficult trying to, I, I've, I've done it before. Don't get me wrong, that might be another episode on a podcast, but I, I've done it before, having 
having to infiltrate the mind frame, the, the, the state of mind of employees. I mean, really, that's what... It, okay, so it doesn't have to be a whole other episode, but long story short, it requires leadership qualities, not so much managers, right? A manager can hire and fire, but a leader is someone who develops their team, their crew, in order to later have a crew of leaders and have them go off and proselytize leadership, cultivate other disciples of the practice. Again, it doesn't have to be just management. It's leadership. It's a whole other quality. It's wanting to improve and contribute to your network. And few people do that, apparently. That's why the pyramid flows upward. That's why there are more managers than there are employees. Sorry, there's. that's why there are less managers. There are more employees than there are managers. There are less managers as you go up. And even less leaders than there are managers. Some CEOs aren't even leaders. That's what I'm saying. In our mind, we might have that conception of CEOs amounting to, to individuals of leadership. And that's not always the case. Check out these comments real quick. First comment says, as a manager, one should communicate what needs to be done to advance and develop. Then it's up to the employee to take it or leave it. To take it, to leave it? Yeah, to take it or leave it. And if they take it, they should be compensated. People that become jaded either didn't receive that feedback received it and were in denial or went defensive or did the work but didn't get the compensation. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's the definition of being jaded, being jaded, being seasoned, being seasoned, being being too street, coming off the street already inculcated with a sense of, of code, right? Where if I tell you you did something wrong, you take it too personally, you take it to heart, yeah, I get it. Business is personal, but how you conduct business, how you conduct business is also personal. So it's it's best never to approach anybody fucking sideways, talking all reckless and shit, right? It takes a certain tact. It takes diplomacy to be able to give the kind of feedback required to develop leaders. It's, it's constructive feedback. It's not so much a criticism, pointing out what they did wrong, but it's, it's demonstrated and illustrating opportunity for improvement, for growth. And in that way, you're educating leaders, not just reprimanding subordinates. This commenter continues, so it seems like you're asking about the people who are given the opportunity, don't take it, and then become jaded. Uh, that's kind of what it sounds like. And that's just how some people are, and no matter what you no, no matter what, you can't get them on board. Best to steer clear of people with those attitudes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. When, when somebody when somebody entrenches themselves in an ideology of of just settling. I, I actually was an employee under a, um, a corporate manager who did exactly this, who did exactly this. I used to work for a large national auto parts chain and, uh, the district manager, the district manager that I used to work under was a settler. They settled in, in corporate me being me being a corporate cowboy on some corporate cowboy shit, I had ideas. 
I had ideas that I wanted to see come to fruition. I had ideas which I wrote proposals for. And I wanted to speak to somebody who had the authorities to act on them. Now, granted, this was almost a decade ago. And I was a novice. You know, I, I still consider myself a novice today. And I come with experience, right? So to some I'm experienced and to others, I'm still a novice and I'm always hungry to learn. I appreciate that much about life is that while it never fails to surprise me, it doesn't surprise me that I've got more to learn. <laughs> I'm intrigued. I'm interested every moment of every day. I love it. I love it. And this, this, this manager... My district manager, these ideas that I was sending up, I think it was only a total of two, like two initiatives. They were somewhat fleshed out on, 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 you know, on paper in the form of a proposal. And uh, I wasn't necessarily asking for anything exclusive, anything special. I would have appreciated some type of compensation, right? For having came up with the idea, having came up with a system to be able to implement it, and then another system to evaluate it, to, to, to see it after it's implemented. And uh, no, no, it went. Not only did it go underappreciated, right, but it went. It was misappreciated to the extent that my district manager's manager, so like the, the motherfucker two rungs above me, two steps above me, handpicked my manager, essentially. Like the district manager, they got fucking force-fed some bullshit and pretty much were told to shut me down, right? With, uh, un, un, with the fear... That I might, what, unionize or some shit? Ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. And I'll never forget what the district manager told me. The district manager says, Alex, why, why do you have to rock the boat right now? When I'm, I just got in the driver's seat, he says, right? Like he, he just, like he just settled on corporate and now he has to deal with Alex rocking the boat. <laughs> <laughs> fucking sad to be honest but it is what it is I didn't stay on too much after but that's fine that's fine I found that I didn't fit in anyways I did what I could while I was there I scouted a little cloak and dagger I vetted this district manager. I, I even asked them what kind of reach they had, how much pull they had, who I could get in contact with. And, and they presented themselves as someone who was capable. And they weren't. Not by a long shot. Again, you live and you learn as a novice. Those are just lessons of business. Those are, those are lessons of life. The next comment here says, <clears throat> kind of sounds like my partner and I, okay? It says here, I am extremely ambitious. My partner isn't. I've been promoted four times in six years and I have a decent bonus package. Why? Because every job I ask what I can do to get higher. I work towards them goals. I work towards them goals. I try to be personable and friendly, yet get tasks done. I manage conflict tactfully, but put my foot down if someone tries to take me for a ride. When it comes to review time, I have ticked off a lot of tasks. Repeat till you reach the ceiling, and naturally, you get promoted. My partner, on the flip side can sometimes complain life is hard and unfair, yet doesn't graft for anything better. Doesn't graft? Doesn't, doesn't graft? 
doesn't grasp for anything better. I don't know. Doesn't grasp for anything better. He is an excellent person, humble, caring, nurturing. He absolutely hates conflict. So he retracts in his shell. Not to make out he is negative. He is a great guy, just not made to be a manager, which is fair enough. So here you have two personalities. The latter, in my opinion, feels the world is unfair, but they have a soft heart and can't take discomfortable positions, i.e. when they're at work negotiating a raise or a conflict. And so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You think positive and positive stuff happens. You think negative and negative happens. It's completely right. It's completely true. I forget where I heard this now, but but the biggest lie, one of the biggest lies ever told was it's not that simple. And you might want to, and you might ask yourself why, why is, why is that a lie? And it's not that simple or, or what is, what is it about whatever we're talking about? That is not that simple. And, and, and that statement, it's not that simple is the lie. I feel like we've been told that some since we were very young and others when, when, when we've got that job, like I did at this auto part chain, right? And I created some initiatives. I tried to promote them, have them gain traction in corporate. And my district manager tells me it's not that simple. It's a fucking lie, honestly. It's a fucking lie. It's just that nobody wants to do the work. I'm not going to say nobody, right? Because that's, that's too general. It's just that most individuals, these managers who are not leaders, these managers who are not leaders don't want to change. The status quo is quote unquote good enough. Why rock the boat, Alex? <laughs> Jeez, that sticks out in my mind. Why rock the boat? That's because I want to do better. I want something different. I want more money. I want better business. But to others, changing the dynamic to any degree is a cause for additional work even if it's different even if it's less even if it's more efficient it's just added work to have to learn to do it it's laziness it's complacency it's settling it's going to work showing up for the check and just being a sitting duck. Business is war. I've said it before. So you go to work, you're really going to war. And if you're just showing up for the check, you're an empty helmet. You're just a waste of supply. Cannon fodder on the front lines. <laughs> it's not that hard. You crack a book. Identify what it is in your life that you think you should be improving. Is it public speaking? Is it negotiation? Another social skill? Is it math? Is it science, chemistry, biology? These are subjects that aren't off limits to us. This, this knowledge isn't hidden away. It just requires people, individuals to go out of their way and seek it, to want to understand it, to, to, to train and improve themselves, develop a better professional identity for themselves. I can appreciate that. That's what I've done. And that's what I do still. I want to be a better professional. I want to be a consummate professional. One that people can trust, people can come to for exceptional ideas, professional advice, things of that nature.
And I've worked to get to the position that I'm at now, whether it be legal, professional, or extracurricular, extra legal. <laughs> if you don't move to improve, you will fall behind. That's easy math. It's so simple. It's so basic. And yet people fail to grasp it. People fail to really put it on balance and identify it as the only option. The only option to life. The only option to actually live life is to improve. If you don't, you're fucking dying. You're, oh, you're settling? You might as well bury yourself then and there. (laughs) Save me the chore of having to dig your grave. Save me the chore of having to squirrel your body away. (laughs) Have a great weekend. I'll catch you next time.